Hey everyone, this is Sam, and here with Brian. What's up, guys? We are playing Zelda The Phantom Hourglass from 2007. This is a DS game, and uh, it, it, it's really cool because it uses only stylus controls and a bunch of other DS, you know, exclusive things. You won't be able to play this on anything but a DS or now 3DS. Yes. Yeah. That was which, one of the... Which makes it totally unique. Like, right now, you can see there's, like, the little... Uh, navi type fairy running around on the Azure. screen that's actually the stylus point where we're recording right now you can't see the lower screen which has a map on it or in this case the upper screen don't want to get too confusing but uh this is near the beginning of the game and uh one of the coolest things about it uh besides you know just tapping to kill everything which i really like is that you can draw paths out for your ship in this giant ocean to go explore and your ship kind of automates along this path now we can't we're not going to show you that we're going to go to this Length of a dungeon. Unfortunately, right here. we can't because the boat's locked. So we yeah, have to... they won't let us get on the boat because we are in the middle of exploring and uh, going to dungeons. You can already see we have some of the classic Zelda tools right now, um, including bombs and a shovel. Um, this is a, this is an interesting point of controversy in this game. You go back to this dungeon a lot. Yeah, a lot of times. It's uh, one of the things that a lot of people complained about in this game is having to go through and redo levels that you've already done before. Yeah. In this, but so you you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you get deeper and deeper into this dungeon, but you can skip areas because you have new skills and it makes it easier to get down. To right, in certain areas, areas you can get, you can just skip a certain point, but there are some that you have to um, redo, but for the most part you can skip those. Yeah, so, so one thing I remember from this game is what I believe to be the most obscure, difficult, Zelda-related puzzle ever in any Zelda game. Do you know what I'm talking about? What was that? This is a puzzle in which you get this clue about how a piece of parchment you're reading or a tablet you're reading is upside down or backwards, and you just are standing there trying to figure this thing out. You can run away and go real. I think like you may think you don't have what you need to solve the, the puzzle, right. but like what you actually need to do is clamshell shut the DS. And the lower screen oh, I remember copies that. onto the upper yeah, screen. Yeah, it's like it's like a little stamp. So that's unless right. you get so frustrated, yeah, it's a stamp. That's right. It's unless like a you get stamp. so frustrated, um, and and finally snap your your screen shut, you won't ever figure that out. It's it's very obscure. Yeah. So right now you're using the stylus to throw your boomerang. I love that. You can uh, draw a path for it. Again, a lot of people give this game flack for some of the, the neat things that it has. Like, you know, combat is not as accurate because you're, you're doing this weird tapping and stuff. But that's not really what this right. game is about. It's about solving puzzles, exploring. So I like that. Uh, one thing that's really cool about this game, it is a direct sequel to Wind Waker. Yeah. I don't think people realize that. Like, I think it's literally just right after the yeah, game because you like, go on the they ship. They took their boat out. They're just gone. They're like, what are we going to do next? And... Uh, and they, you know, run into this ghost ship. Yeah. And it goes from there. But, yeah, it takes place right after Wind Waker, so Tetra is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's, not, she's not really acting as Zelda in this game. She's no, still just Tetra, which pirate is cool. Self. Unfortunately, she gets turned to stone. And, of course, it's using the cell shading um, style of Wind Waker. Which is what really made me incredibly excited for this game when it first came out. Yeah, the cutscenes look really good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's also kind of top-down oh. Zelda-like, right? So yeah, it has yeah. the elements of, of both those games really nicely. And the sequel to this is Zelda Spirit Tracks, The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. And it is a game we're also going to be playing. I think you and I together, Brian, are going to mm -hmm. be playing that a little bit yeah. too. And it, it just is a direct sequel to this, but it takes place 100 years later. So it's not the same Link or and Zelda's in it instead of Tetra, even though those are technically the same people. Yeah. And it's a little different. So right now, you are trying to avoid those guards at all costs, right? Oh, yes. Indeed. Otherwise, they'll kill me, but... Do they kick you out of the dungeon if you get... They... I believe they make you start at the beginning of the room. I can't remember. I can try and run into them and okay. see what they do. Forget what they do to me. <laughs> oh, you lose time. That's right. I oh, that. man. You lose time. You start at the beginning of the room, but you just lose time. How do you feel about time limits in any game? Do they stress me uh, they they're, they're very stressful. Yeah. It, it also depends on it, but... Um, in this game, especially when all you have is time in these, and you lose them, you Did lose you even more time. Have to run through the fire by hitting that switch there. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, you have to light that one. See, that's already a pretty tough puzzle for early, early in this. Yeah, game. especially when you you know, especially when getting into this game, and you don't remember like using stylus for pretty much everything in this game. Yeah. And doing that is just something let's, you have to get used to. Let's take a look at the uh, menu map real quick. Because one great thing about this game, which should be in every Zelda, is that you can mark whatever you want yeah. on the map. Like, you can just openly draw on You know, that's that's one thing that I wanted them to... I don't think they brought that yeah, back in Kirby. the... Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember if they brought that back um, in Link Between Worlds. 
where they didn't let you draw on the map. Yeah, I guess you couldn't no, yeah. annotate the map even though it's a 3DS game. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah well, you had those little pins that you could yeah. drop. Um, the but pins you, were nice. But yeah, those were kind of basically your notes, but you couldn't... You couldn't openly Professor Layton-style doodle on the map. Right, which which was really helpful in this game Yeah, with all the uh, um, different One other great thing that happened with the uh, oh, Phantom Hourglass is that it was released as a bundle with a gold DS with a Triforce on it. Yeah. Same kind of so what they did cool. with the... Uh, with the Just uh, like A Link Between Worlds. Yeah. But yeah, that was a 3DS. But yeah, and then an XL. But this is just a, the classic, I believe, light version of the DS, which is really my probably one of my favorite pieces of Nintendo-designed hardware ever. It's That DS Lite is so pretty. Yeah. This game looks so amazing on it. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and it looks okay blown up. But yeah, you really need to play this on the system it was intended for. It doesn't even look that great on, on 3DS because 3DS doesn't emulate DS games so well. Yeah, it kind of it just blurs out a little <laughs> bit. But but this on like a DSi or a DS it, Lite. Yeah, because the colors come out really great on it. Um, so that's, that screen is native to so it. So we should wrap this up. Do you think you're going to get to the next room? I'm going to try to get to the next room. It's hard to play and, and reminisce at the same time. Stun that guy with your boomerang. Oh, can you? Yeah. I thought he just gets all like... Oh, does he turn around? If he yeah, he turns around and goes all crazy <laughs> on you. you got to wait till he passes. Okay. Go down! Go down! Oh. Well, I want to go up. Yeah, I know. I was thinking you could get behind him and just carefully... You can hide in that. I think I could hide in these. Can you get to the next one? Derp! Derp! I did it. You did. Now what? Ah, uh, of course. The foot pressure switch. <laughs> Good old foot pressure switches. Do you think that's going to be the place you need to get within your time limit, or do you think there's going to be more to go? We'll see. <gasps> because key. I think this is like the first time you had to come, like we're right, right after the, one of the first times we had to come to the, yeah. the temple. Well, I encourage you to check out more of this game. We have more videos of uh, the Phantom Hourglass on IGN, and of course you can check out many, many more Zelda videos, and all, also uh, videos of other Nintendo games, which we're recording right now, for Nintendo's 125th anniversary. Nintendo's actually been a company for 125 125 years. 125 years, that's insane. Yeah, they haven't been making video games that long, um, but they have been a company that long, and that's why we're doing 125 Let's Plays of our favorite Nintendo games. So keep checking back, and uh, thanks, Brian. Yeah, thanks.